Hey, so I haven't done anything on 3D printing for a while. I thought I'd shoot a real quick video and show you guys my uh, Rostock Max V2 uh, sitting here running. Um, this is actually doing a production run of these. This is basically a small fingered doomback. A doomback is a, a medieval, a mid, mid, Middle Eastern, not a medieval, Middle Eastern drum that I sell at a medieval reenactment. Um, and uh, so I did this design uh, in the one two three d design from Autodesk. And um, the Rostock is uh, dialed in really well here. The surface finishes on this are really nice. And if you can see how shiny the head is, I'm being really particular about the first layer. Most people don't care about first layer of their print. Uh, that's just the thing that sticks it to the base. But the drum heads are printed integral to this. And so you can see that running, sitting here running on the, on the Rostock. Um, on my glass, I have a wide Kapton tape. And on the Kapton tape, I've put down a, a slurry of here, I'll show you. This is um, natural ABS that's melted in acetone, right? So it's just a couple little pieces of uh, a natural ABS filament uh, melted in acetone. Um, take that with a paper towel and wipe it on the surface. ABS and PLA both stick to it perfectly. So, uh, uh, and I get a really great surface finish out of this. It's got a little bit of of like a dusting on it you can see the kind of smear marks back and forth um, that's from the acetone now I've tried to take acetone and clean that off under the assumption that acetone doesn't melt PLA guess what acetone will melt PLA if you put it directly on it and, and scrub it so um, I haven't found a way to take that that PLA ghosting off of, uh, or the ABS ghosting off the PLA yet I could use a black ABS uh, if I had some and that would probably work. I haven't tried melting the PLA into it uh, and see whether or not that will do anything. Um, but it might because, I don't know, I'm not a chemist, I'm a software engineer. So, anyhow, um, I'm running production runs of these. This is a five inch drum, about five inches tall. And here is one of the big ones. This is, uh, this is his big brother. This is a, a seven inch tall one. I'm consistently surprised how loud these are. Uh, and the outside surface and even the inside surface of this has uh, gotten quite good. The, the inside surface, uh, on some of these, I have a lot of stringing. Uh, well, not a lot of stringing, but enough that it's it's I have to spend some effort to clean it up and I really didn't want to I've now got my retraction settings on this set as high as uh, eight millimeters so it's a little higher than I thought I'd have to get to uh, the CME CNC site uh, seems to suggest that they were using something on the order of three millimeters that was not nearly high enough I kept going up a millimeter at a time until I got to eight and by the time I get to eight then I get the interior that looks like this um, so I've run an entire spool of black and an entire spool of blue uh, out of that filament. Uh, this was some leftover green that I had that I'm running now. I don't know whether I have enough green, so I may have to uh, keep an eye on this and, and pause it uh, midway through and change filaments out. So it might be a half green, half pink or something. I don't know. Anyhow, um, I've made lots and lots of these. This is a smaller, uh, the smaller one, and actually most of these little tiny ones were made on my older uh, MakerBot Thingomatic. Um, it's currently not running right. Uh, I need to take it apart and put it back together. It'll probably be fine. Um, that little thing, man, that thing ran just terrific. And I had it dialed in really, really well. I was still driving it with Replicator G um, and the old uh, slicing program from that. Um, here I'm using Slicer, S-L-I-C-3-R. Um, and uh, I like the way that that organizes the difference between filament and printer print settings and the printer settings so uh, I'm still I'm using slicer I like it's I think it's just organized better than um, matter control Eh, whatever um, I, it gives me I think it gives me slightly better output than matter control um, admittedly I haven't tried to dial matter controls uh, 
uh, parameters in quite as much time as I've spent with this, but I got something that works, I'm probably not going to change. So I've also done um, a lot of testing with um, both print height and first layer thickness and some differences in, um, in the accelerations. Uh, one thing I found about the, the firmware and the row stock is that accelerations in your slicing software don't make any difference whatsoever. It's totally overridden by the parameters that are in the printer. Um, and so I don't think I can show this here well. I'd have to like throw a light behind this or something. These are the drum, essentially the drum heads out of the drums. And I have, you know, like a whole card deck full of them um, at various different um, thicknesses and adjusting the uh, accelerations, adjusting the first layer uh, filament output, which I'm now at 225%, and adjusting um, the, the layer height, of course, making sure that not only did I calibrate it with a feeler gauge, which I think you should always do, not business cards, not a piece of paper, they're too inconsistent, you never know what paper cardstock thickness you're actually getting. Use a feeler gauge, they're five bucks guys, come on. This is um, uh, 0.203 millimeters or 0 0.008 inches. That's the, that's the one I'm using. And then I tweak it just a little bit maybe once I get them all flat and level and get everything set. I'll adjust those, the, the screws just, you know, a quarter of a turn at a time. You're, you're making such a small difference there that it's almost an aesthetic change rather than a mechanical change of how the first layer adheres. Uh, but like I said, my first layer is super critical. I need, I need that, you know, that super glossy pretty finish on the, on the drum heads. Uh, and so I kept dialing the thing in until I really got it right. All right. Quick look at uh, Rostock Max V2 and a little bit of uh, 3D printing. Uh, go get a feeler gauge.